Hey, I'm Del Shanzi. Not happy about the circumstances of this video, but yet another person has died. This time Grant Thompson, a really famous YouTube star uh, who is very well known and well liked. And it's very, very upsetting because the people who killed him, there's just, there's no reason and no excuse for it. Now, they actually called me and we were talking about doing a YouTube comparison where he was going to have two of his guys train at super training and then two of his guys train at aviator PPG. And then we would bring them all together and show the real truth of what the actual difference was. But of course, the guys that went to aviator PPG, one of them died. So now, you know, obviously they're not going to want to complete or do that video. Although realistically, I mean, it's very upsetting, but it can't show more perfectly the reality of how huge the difference is. And it's very, very sad because this guy had accidentally signed up with these guys, you know, and they just have no idea. And I talked to him for about an hour and a half explaining the differences, pointing him towards the videos, but then people get lazy and since they already pay and they, you know, and it's like they want to take the easy route since they already paid. They're like, oh, well, we'll just do it and see how it goes. But now he's dead. And how do you, you know, how do you see how it goes when you die because they didn't train you properly and they didn't put you on the proper gear? This is very upsetting because this is just one of five deaths now, five more in just the last matter of weeks. And it's always the same type of thing. It's the exact same type of horrible gear over and over and over. And you explain to people, the logic is obvious because there's certified gliders and then there's totally uncertified class gliders. And so with certified gliders, you even have different classes. You've got A, which is the safest, and then B, and then C, and then D, which would be the least safe. And then you have totally uncertified class gliders. Well, you have these incompetent and dishonest people out there that are pushing newbies towards totally uncertified class gliders that are complete death traps. They have a 100% chance of killing you. Literally 100%. The, it's, you have you know less odds of getting in a car accident and your odds of getting in a car accident are like 75% if you factor over your whole lifetime. Well, if you fly a paraglider over a lifetime, you have a basically a 100% chance that at some point you're gonna take a collapse. That's the whole point of these safety certifications. And it's really sad to see someone die simply because they were deceived into getting the absolute worst and least safe gear in the entire history of the sport instead of encouraged to get the absolute best and safest gear when there's no logical reason to push people towards the unsafe gear. It just makes no sense. So the problem is, is when you take a collapse, the certifications are based on how the glider recovers from a collapse. So the safest class of glider, if it takes an asymmetric collapse, it basically has to reopen and fully recover before the glider turns off course even 90 degrees. Well, an uncertified class glider is so unsafe that when they take that same asymmetric collapse, the glider will literally do a backflip, shoot a 360 and lock into a spiral face first towards the ground. And you hit the ground face first at between 85 and 105 miles an hour. And then you combine that with a horrible paramotor that has soft floppy hang points. And so it's really easy to get riser twists and get all spun up in the risers. And then you've got no crumple zone, no impact protection. So when you hit the ground, it's just your spine taking the full brunt of the impact. And on top of that, you know, very commonly, they won't even have a reserve or understand how to throw it. And of course, on top of that, they don't have the skills to actually prevent the collapse in the first place. 
because active piloting skills would make you thousands and thousands of times m less likely to take the collapse, basically. If you don't have the skill to actively pilot your glider, you're literally thousands of times more likely to take a collapse. It's that simple. When that glider shoots forward and tries to dive to a negative angle of attack, if you have the reflexes and skills from proper training, you're gonna hit the brakes and you're just gonna stop it from happening. But it has to be reflexes. You don't have time to think about it. But to train that skill in takes about 25 to 60 hours of actual uh, glider control practice on the beach, in the wind, where you can practice, you know, upwards of eight, nine hours a day to get that 25 to 60 hours into a, you know, reasonable class of about 10 days. And then on top of, you need hundreds flights on top of that. But if you don't take that time, you're just not going to have that ability to have the reflexes to automatically respond to what the glider's doing. And if you see someone who's trained properly, you're going to notice they're making four to five corrections per second, where someone who has not been trained properly, all they're doing is telling the glider which way to turn. And so they pull it and they tell it to go that way, or they pull brake and they tell it to go that way. They're not controlling the pitch or the loading or the perfect directional input at all. It's just like going all over the place. The glider's pitching, it's lolling, you're losing lift and they're not controlling that because they're never taught how to do it. And so you have people that don't have even the most basic skills themselves out pretending to be instructors. Now, a lot of people will think, oh, well, they should regulate this sport and there should be certifications. Well, no, because in Canada, they, you do have to get a license. And so what did they do? They gave the licensing to the incompetent people that were the problem, that were the whole reason for the licenses. So now in Canada, you have to go get a license from the very people that are so incompetent, they're the reason that the licenses were created in the first place. They don't have even the most basic skills and they don't train people to have those skills, but now you have to get a little piece of paper that says you have no skills. So. It's not about certifications, it's about freedom and people, you know, learning to do their research and take their lives seriously. If you didn't do your research of who knows what they're doing versus who doesn't, it's on you. It's not on someone else to make up for your mistake. If you made that mistake, you're the pilot in command. You either did your research and you recognize that you have proper skills or you didn't and you simply don't have those skills. So over and over these people get killed and it makes the sport look horribly unsafe and really trashes the image of the sport when in reality, in all of history, in the entire history of the sport, only one person has ever died on the best and safest gear. And that was from doing acrobatics where they literally flew upside down, face first into the ground, had nothing to do with the gear. But when a new pilot dies, I mean, it's you simply look at what happened and that reflects on the competency of the instructor. So did they have the best and safest paramotor? In this case, no, he had the absolute worst. Did they have the best and safest glider? No, he had a totally uncertified class glider guaranteed to kill him. Did he have a reserve? Again, it's just not happening. Did he have the skills? No, he was not trained to have even the most basic ability to prevent collapses. So the instructor, Aviator PPG, obviously failed in every single way to try and help the guy or to do what an instructor's job is. I mean, what's an instructor's job? The instructor's job is to prepare the student in every possible way to be as safe as possible. Now, that doesn't mean they have to fly like a grandma. That means the instructor needs to prepare them for every possible thing that can go wrong and will go wrong to mitigate the risks and to stack the odds in their favor. But you have people like Aviator PPG. This is the second person they got killed in just a very short period of time. And, you know, back it up to where their experience is from. 
So Eric Farewell of Aviator PPG, where did he train? At Blackhawk. What's Blackhawk's skill level? Well, watch a video of my brand new student takes off first try, but then he has to land to help the Blackhawk instructor try to launch. You can watch the video, see the video. It's no BS, you, you know, there's no sales pitch there. That's my brand new student who has to land to help their instructor launch. So Aviator PPG learned from a guy who literally doesn't have even the most basic skills. So obviously they don't have even the most basic skills themselves and they can't teach what it is they don't know. But there's more to it because generally an honest person will be honest enough with themselves to realize that they really can't do what they see skilled pilots doing. I mean, if they look at a video of brand new super students, obviously they don't have the ability to do what brand new properly trained people can do. And if you had even the slightest bit of logic and reasoning, you're gonna realize that, hey, you weren't trained properly because you don't have the skill to reverse kite no hands. You don't have the skill to kite up a vertical wall. You don't have the skill to perfectly control the altitude of your body, give or take one inch. And you don't have that skill to be able to prevent collapses and active pilot your glider. And if you don't have these skills, why are you acting as an instructor? How's it gonna hurt you to go get super training and learn the best skills in the world for yourself before you teach those to others? How are skills gonna harm you? Where's the logic in thinking that getting proper training yourself is somehow gonna hurt you when you then go to teach other people skills? Then of course you've got the gear. You know, if you don't have even the most basic skills, at least sell people the best and safest gear. But as we know with this world today, you have people that are honorable and honest that try and do what's right. And you have people that are just freaking evil that don't seem to care one bit how many people die or even the logic of why they die. They just keep selling the most horribly unsafe gear in the market, scamming people out the door and taking their money. And now again, we've got another nice guy that got killed for the simple reason of he was not prepared properly. I mean, I have way over 11,000 flights. I'm one of the most experienced pilots in the history of the sport. You can see me all over YouTube doing things that no other person on earth can do. If the sport was dangerous, why am I not the one getting injured and killed? It's the difference between proper skills and proper gear. That's the difference. I mean, I'm out there pushing the limits and flying like a wild man and doing all kinds of crazy, stupid stuff, but I've never even been injured because I'm flying gear that when you mess up, it's designed to save your life, not trying to end your life. So there's no reason for 99% of the carnage and death that you see in this sport in the same ways over and over and over. Now watch this video, for example, where again, you see another victim of this same problem. They sell him the absolute worst gear and watch, he takes off. He doesn't have even the most basic skills. So he hasn't been taught how to weight shift. He hasn't been taught about managing torque and he hasn't been taught about uh, managing the direction of his body and keeping his body going the direction of the glider. And he doesn't have the right gear. So the risers aren't stable like the flat top. So they easily twist up and he spins and literally face plants straight into the ground. Now, why are people not preparing you know, and at least having the decency to do everything that they can to prepare people to prevent this from happening to them. It's, you know, anybody can die. Yes, we know that, duh, obviously. You can die in a Mercedes, but that doesn't mean a Mercedes isn't safer than a motorcycle. Yes, just because someone's died in a Mercedes, I mean, where's the logic? It's 
You know, then they try and say, oh, it's not the gear, it's the person. Well, yes, it is. If you die on a motorcycle, you didn't have hardly any protection at all and your body took the full force of the impact. Where to die in a Mercedes, that had to be one seriously insane impact because you've got a car designed to save your butt. You're strapped inside your roll cage. And a flat top paramotor is exactly the same. You're strapped inside of your roll cage and you got up to 18 inches of crumple zone designed to absorb that impact. And with the safest glider on the market, even a full stall, your terminal velocity is only about 20 feet per second. So the odds of getting injured are so low that my family, me, my four kids, my wife, we're all pilots. Not a single one of us have ever been injured. And it's not for a lack of making mistakes because we've all done stupid, goofy things and messed up. The difference is it was on gear that was designed to save our butt and so we were completely uninjured. So this sport is truly incredible. And the fact that I've never been injured and I'm the wildest guy out there pushing all the limits and doing things nobody else on earth can do and that I've never been injured or any of my kids shows how incredibly safe the sport is. There's just no reason for 99% of these needless deaths, they would have been easily preventable if people would just be honest about what training really is producing the best skills. When you're shopping for training, look at the skills of the people they've trained. Are the people they've trained crashing and dying constantly? Or can you see the people they've trained kiting up vertical walls and standing on top of poles with one foot? I mean, look at the skill level. It's huge difference. Then look very closely at the safety. Beginner class certified glider versus uncertified class. It's not a sales pitch. It's blatantly obvious. It's the safest class of glider versus gliders that are so unsafe, they're, they're just death traps. And then, of course, the paramotor. You know, I've got a whole video series of the 304 reasons competent pilots only fly flat tops. And they go over all these little pieces in exacting detail. And it's a lot of information that you would just never think of or never hear of anywhere else. So do your research when you get in the sport. And don't be scared of the sport because somebody dies needlessly on a totally uncertified class glider with a paramotor from the 1980s. There's ab it has nothing to do with the real actual sport where it's incredible. I mean, we're out there having a total blast doing all kinds of crazy, stupid stuff. And the safety is just remarkable if you just get the right gear and training. I'm Del Shanzi. Hopefully this has put a little perspective into yet another tragedy that just really did not need to happen.